What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to do two factor authentication with one time passwords in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so I think most people are familiar with the concept of two factor authentication and one time passwords. The basic idea is that you have an extra layer of security when you log into a service. So you enter username and password, but then to make sure it's really you, you also get a code, for example, onto your phone in your authenticator app, and you need to enter this code to uh, finish the login process. So if someone else knows your username and password, they can try to log in, even though uh, they have the correct combination, they will not be able to log in because they don't know the code that was sent to your phone, for example. So they would need to have uh, both these things to log into your account. Uh, and this is harder to crack harder to hack essentially, um, if you have two factor authentication. And in this video today, what we're going to do is we're going to implement that in Python, we're going to see how we can generate uh, one time passwords and how we can verify them with our own secret key. So we're going to choose a secret key or to generate a secret key. And then we're going to uh, issue new one time passwords. And we can also verify them. And this can be used then in a secure login system. So we're going to start by opening up the command line and saying pip install pi OTP. So pi one time password is the library that we're going to use in this video today. Um, and what we're going to do first is we're going to import time, we're going to also import pi OTP. And the first thing we need to decide on is the key. Now, as I said, we can just generate the key. So we can say key equals pi OTP dot random base 32. And then we can print that key. And this would then be our key. Now, one thing that you need to understand is, if someone has this key, this same key, they will generate the same one time password. So this is something that should be completely secret. Only you as the service provider should have that key and no one else should have that key because if they have the same key, they don't need to request uh, your one time passwords, they can just generate it themselves. So if someone has the same key as you, they will generate the same one time passwords as you so they don't need you to get the one time passwords. This is very important. Uh, we can also set this manually. So we can say key equals I don't know, neural nine, my super secret key or something like that. Um, and this can then be the uh, the the uh, the base key for our one time passwords. And we're going to start with time based one time passwords, the basic idea here being that every 30 seconds, we get a new one time password. This is what you oftentimes uh, have in different services, I think on steam, for example, you have the steam guard, where you log into your steam account. And then you have to if you have enabled two factor authentication, you have to enter a six digit code. And after 30 seconds, it expires, and you have to enter another code uh, to log in. So in order to do that here in Python, we have to say TOTP for time based one time password. Um, this is going to be equal to pi OTP dot TOTP in capital letters. And we're going to pass here the key as the base. And what we can do now is we can just say print TOTP dot dot now, since this is a time based one, it's always based on the time. So now you can see it's 000, uh, 0274. I can run this again. Now, um, it's it's a different one. But if I run it now, again, it's always the same one for 30 seconds. So I can run this a lot of times after 30 seconds, it will be a different code. So I can always rerun this, you can see it's the same code, this would be the correct code for verification. Uh, but after 30 seconds, it will be a different code. And we can actually try this out. So we can actually say, time sleep 30 and then print the same thing. So now it's uh, still the same, we can just keep this running here as um, we talk about uh, one time passwords. But that's the basic idea. So if you want to have a secure login system where you also integrate two factor authentication, you would um, have a QR code to be scanned by the user, I'm going to show you how to do that in the end. Um, and then the user would just uh, on their app on the Google Authenticator app, for example, see, okay, this is the one time password, if I want to log into the service, uh, I have to enter this and we can verify this uh, using the verify method that I'm going to show you here in a second, as you can see, now the code is a different one, because enough time has passed. Um, and we can actually go ahead now and just say something like uh, input code is equal to input enter to F a code. And then we're going to say the code that we should enter is TOTP dot now and we're going to print 
whether the input code is the same as the code. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, this was not how we want to do it. I mean, this is probably also a possibility, but what you actually want to do is want to say totp.verify and you want to verify the input code because this does this automatically. So we get uh, the code that we put in and then we verify it with that totp object with, which will just check if this code is the same as the now code, but it will do so in the exact moment. So if I do this fast enough, 585079, if I'm not unlucky now, okay, in this case, we also need to print the result, obviously. 585079, true. Okay, so if I try the same code, obviously, now, at the moment, it's still a code. If I wait now, I don't know, 20 seconds or something, and then I enter the same code, it will say it's no longer the valid code because the code has expired. I will now have a new code. That's the basic idea. I'm not sure if this is already the case. I'm going to just wait a couple more seconds. Um, and this is how you can check that, right? So you have a login. You say, okay, please enter your one-time password. Then you look into your Authenticator app. You enter it fast enough. Uh, so I can try this now, it says false, even though it was true a couple of seconds ago, now it's false because the code has expired. That's the basic idea of the TOTP. Now we also have the HOTP, which is the counter based password. So we can say the counter is equal to zero. And then we can say HOTP is equal to pi t uh, pi OTP dot HOTP based on this key. And we can say print HOTP at and then we can just provide a number. So this will always be the same. This is not time based. So the value at zero will always be the same for this key. And I can also change this to one, two, three, four. You can see those values will always be the same. That's the basic idea here. And we can also uh, verify now. So we can, uh, we can just say, for example, four counter in range five, for example, uh, we can say print h o t p dot verify. And we want to verify whatever we put in. So input enter code. And we want to verify it for a certain counter. So we're going to pass the counter here. And we're going to say counter plus equals one. And then I can do one four uh, one seven one eight, this should be true. If I put in something else, so if I do the same thing, one for one, seven, one, eight, it says false, because I should have entered this one, it still increased the counter. So the next code that I would have to enter here. Oh, I cannot type because my Vim plugin is a little bit buggy. So let me just restart this briefly. Uh, so again, the first one is one for one, seven, one, eight. Now I can put in something else here. Doesn't work. And then the next one would be seven, eight, four, eight, four, three, this would work again. So it's a counter based one, it will always have the same values for the same number and for the same key. So that's the basic idea of the different of, of these two uh, one time passwords. Now we're going to take a look at how we can generate a URI that can be scanned by a Google Authenticator app in the form of a QR code. If you want to do this in the form of a QR code, you have to install an additional library. So you want to open up your command line, pip install QR code is the library. So you want to do it like that. Um, and then what we want to do is we, we just want to generate the URI by saying URI equals pi OTP dot TOTP dot TOTP, then we pass the key. And then we say dot provisioning URI. And the name is the name of the user. So if you have the username of the respective person, you can say, okay, uh, Mike Smith, one, two, three is the username, for example, uh, and the service. So the issuer name, we issue these one time passwords is neural nine app, or something like that. So the application name. This will also be displayed in the authenticator app. So we can print this your I and this is already enough. So we can already take this here, this OTP auth uh, URI and you can use it like that. But if you want to scan it with a QR code, all you need to do is you need to say QR code dot make URI dot safe. And then uh, TOTP dot PNG, for example, just a file name, we also need to import QR codes. And then when I run this, 
I get this image here, you can try to scan it with your Google Authenticator app. I'm going to do exactly that. So I'm going to go into my authenticator. Right now you can hopefully see let me just see my camera here on the second screen. Um, I have two authentication uh, for Discord and another service. And now I'm going to just scan this with a QR code. So you can just in the Google Authenticator app, you have this QR code scanner, I can scan this and it automatically added here the neural nine app, I'm not sure if you're seeing this correctly here, but you can see neural nine app for Mike Smith 123. And we can always see how the uh, code expires and how it refreshes and gives me a new one. So I can actually now go ahead and without generating anything in this script here, I can just say TOTP equals pi OTP dot verify, or actually, sorry, I need to create the, uh, the object first, so key, and then I can just say print or I can say while true print TOTP verify and I can just input enter code. So I can run this now. And I can always enter the code and it's going to tell me if it's valid or not. So let me just enter something here. This is false. And now on my app, I see what the current code is. It's 352556. True, there you go. So it's still that code. But if I try it now here in a second, so three, five, two, five, five, six. It's false, but now it's one, nine, eight, seven, five, three. There you go true again. So this works with the Google Authenticator app. Um, and yeah, this is how you do two factor authentication in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and 